I say this is a game with uh, imperfect information. So player one uh, cannot observe player two's move. Obviously, I cannot write HTUD here uh, because player one cannot distinguish these two decision nodes, but it's going to be UD, UD, all right? So what would be different if this is the case? So here, uh, we can't use, so this becomes a games with imperfect information. And in those games, we cannot use backward induction. Okay, well, what do we do then? Well, this is not what I'm going to explain to you is not backward induction, but the idea is pretty similar. How so? Well, you look at the, the lost sub game, right? There's, this is a sub game. And the game itself is a sub game. So now there are two sub games and only one proper sub game. So in this sub game, what would remember sub game perfect Nash equilibrium means uh, Nash equilibrium at every sub game. So strategies constitute Nash equilibrium in every sub game. So what is the Nash equilibrium in this sub game? And given that, what would be the Nash equilibrium in the entire game? So that's sort of backward induction when the game becomes uh, incomplete, uh, imperfect information, I'm sorry. So how do I find the Nash equilibrium in this game? Well, simple, just write the normal form or strategic form representation of this game, right? Again, I'm going to look at only the pure strategies, uh, Nash equilibrium. So player one has two actions, UD, player two has two actions, left, right. So if it is LU, uh, the payoff will be one and one. It is LD, it is going to be zero, zero. When it is RU, it is RU, it's zero, zero. And when it is RD, it's three, one. So the pure strategy now, so this is the best response for a player two. So given that player one plays D, the best, this is the best, R is the best response. And then uh, three and one. So that means there is two Nash equilibrium in pure strategies. There must be a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. But again, I'm gonna ignore that. And RD, these are Nash equilibrium in this sub game. Well, so because there are two Nash equilibrium, meaning uh, once player one plays A, they may actually end up having one of those Nash equilibria. All right, so don't forget, sub game perfect Nash equilibrium says strategies form Nash equilibrium in every sub game. And so there are possibly two sub game perfect Nash equilibrium again. So let's see. So if, again, I'm going to create a case. So case one, UL is the Nash equilibrium they will be playing here. If this is the case, so UL meaning one one is the payoff. Player one is going to, in this case, choose B. All right, player one uh, is gonna go for B. However, if the second Nash equilibrium is played, DR, well then what is player one, so DR, 3-1, the best uh, response for, I mean, not best response, but player one's optimal action. Uh, so player one, if he plays A, uh, again, he assumes that they're gonna be playing DR Nash equilibrium here. So he's gonna get three. If he chooses B, he's gonna get two. So the decision is simple, go for A. So that's it. How do I, you know, create the SPNE strategy profiles? Well. Be careful here, this time the strategy for player one doesn't have three components because player one has only two info sets, the initial one and this one. So therefore it's going to be tuple. Player two's info sets still one. All right, so in the first subgame perfect Nash equilibrium for player one is uh, A here, all right? And then uh, D here. So it's A, D, comma, player two is playing right. And then the second one is player one is playing B here, all right? However, here he plays U and player two plays left. So these are two subgame perfect Nash equilibrium out uh, strategy profiles of this game when I just connect those two uh, decision nodes of player one. How different are they? Well, again, if you look at those strategy profiles, they, they look pretty different, right? Uh, sort of AD, but H is missing. Here, BHD, uh, what is it? Well, well, okay, so H is no longer available. Remember, it's our new U, I guess. So BUL, actually, they're not so different. And if you look at the outcomes, this is ADR, A, 
um, and then dr. So the payoff corresponding to this one is 3v1, and payoff corresponding to this one is b, it really doesn't matter what they play afterwards, is 2 0. So the number of subgame perfect Nash equilibrium and the outcomes did not change. But well, that's a coincidence. In many games, uh, when we have simultaneous move, actually the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium strategy profiles and outcomes may differ, may change. Okay? Um, I just wanted to sort of work on the same example and show you how we find subgame perfect Nash equilibrium when we can't really use backward induction because of the simultaneous move. So once again, in the backward induction, the nice thing we solve the optimality sort of opt, sort of opt, we find optimal action uh, for one player at a time in the backward induction, but when there is simultaneous move, so this is in fact a simultaneous move in a sense, because when player two makes a move or when player one makes a move, he can't observe uh, player two's move. So you can think of this as like simultaneous move. So when simultaneous move is present, well then I can't really use backward induction because I can't solve the optimal uh, action strategy. Uh, for each player at a time. I have to solve it here, for example, the optimal actions simultaneously. So how do I do that? I find the Nash equilibrium of uh, this, this strategic form and then plug it here, like it is either UL, all right, or DR, and then solve by using the elements of backward induction. So this is not really backward induction, but it has the elements of backward induction. Okay? 